called Vatna Yökull. Yes, which means the glacier of lakes. So Vatna Yökull is actually the second largest glacier in Europe. Uh, Vatna Yökull has around 30 glacier tongues. This one here, where you see the ice and snow flowing down, forming this lagoon and where all of these ice pieces come from. That one there being the second largest, called Breidarmerkar uh, Yökull, which is around 21 kilometers. I know, very hard name. Uh, yeah, but it didn't used to be that way once. Around 90 years ago, or 1930, that glacier tongue used to go all the way back to the shore where we came from. And there didn't used to be a lagoon, and where we are standing right now, we would be inside the ice. And you see these hills that form around the lagoon? Uh, those hills are where the glacier tongue used to be when it was in balance. But now it's unbalanced, and now it goes back and back and back. And today, we lose around 200 to 300 meters of this glacier tongue every single year, which is around 700 to 1,000 feet, which is horrible, and a lot. Uh, and that happens because of two main reasons. One of them is because uh, this is the only lagoon in Iceland that's connected to the Atlantic Ocean and the Glacier Tongue. So that means warmer salty Atlantic water is streaming under the lagoon, back up where the Glacier Tongue is, melts the Glacier Tongue, mixing with the cold fresh glacier water, resulting in around a 50-50 salty fresh water, so no drinking. Uh, the second reason is global warming. Everything that you see now will be melted within 50 years. And in around 150 years, the whole glacier will be melted, resulting the sea levels around the world to rise around one centimeter just because of this one, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when taking into consideration all the other glaciers that are melting with, it could be catastrophic and dangerous for a lot of people. So, guys, let's do our best to preserve our glaciers and slow down the melting. It matters. Uh, this lagoon that we're on now is called Jökul Sarlón, and it's the largest lagoon that we have, around 38 square kilometers. Uh, it's around... I would say probably two degrees Celsius today and in winter it can go below freezing so uh, I do not recommend swimming I know that from experience believe me let's leave that to the seals uh, this lagoon also has the deepest point in Iceland around 300 meters or a thousand feet which is really deep and then just five kilometers behind that mountain over there behind you guys is the highest point in Iceland around 2110 meters called Kvannadalsnjúkur so this is a place of extremely up and downs and a lot of hard names uh, we also have a lot of wildlife and uh, wild animals here at Yokosalo. We have uh, eater ducks flying around and Icelandic gulls and sometimes we get puffins. Uh, we get puffins when they are looking for a new home. So basically they're looking for mountains and cliffs um, with an amazing view. But when they see the icebergs, they turn around and leave because they hate this place. They hate the ice and they hate the water. So uh, they like to stay at the mountains. Uh, in the water we also have a lot of seals. Uh, we have harbor seals and gray seals. Seals come here because uh, the entrance from the Atlantic Ocean is so small and shallow that predators like sharks, orcas or whales, they are too big to come in. They are too fat in short. So the seals are the kings and queens of the lagoon. They swim around, they eat the fishes that we have like cod, trout, salmon, krill, herring. And they also use the iPhones, cameras and suffixes that the tours drop down after the tour. So be careful with that one. Believe me, it happens more than you think. Um, these icebergs that you see floating around, some of them are blue, some of them are white, some of them are black, and some of them are clear, like the piece that I am holding. Uh, the reason they are blue, when they are formed at such a large size, or frozen, uh, they are so big and they are so dense. So uh, there are no air bubbles inside, there is no space inside, so they are dense, basically compact, that they absorb all colors of light except for blue, which are reflected. It's the same as the water you're looking at, the water is very large, it's very dense, so it reflects the blue light. Uh, and when, these, when the piece of the iceberg that is underwater is not exposed to the sun or oxygen, it holds its density, so uh, it keeps its blue color. And when it recently surfaces, uh, it'll stay blue until, until it melts, and then uh, getting mixed with air bubbles, getting uh, less compact, less dense, then it'll turn white, because it absorbs all colors of the rainbow when it is less dense. The same if you blow air bubbles into the water, those air bubbles are less dense than the water itself, so they will appear white while the water appears blue. Uh, the reason some of them are black is not that they're turning emo or goth, it's actually volcanic ash. So uh, after an eruption, a couple hundred years ago, the ash would fall on the glacier and then it would snow on top of the ash, compressing into lines and making these zebra patterns and uh, these lines that you see running through them. Uh, the reason some pieces are clear, like this one here, uh, is although it is very dense, which means it doesn't have a lot of air bubbles inside, it is too small to reflect any colors of light. All colors go straight through, so they will always appear clear. All smaller pieces will always remain clear. Unless they get melted, then they'll turn white. We usually only see around 20% of our icebergs, the rest of it is underwater, so we only see uh, the tip of the iceberg. So, for example, that one there, 80% is underwater, so they're much bigger than they appear, yeah.
and uh, most of these bigger pieces around us will be melted within three to four weeks and the smaller pieces will maybe take around a week and every single day new pieces come falling down changing out the whole layout of the lagoon uh, lastly before 2017 this place was uh, privately owned which means that a couple individuals owned this place a couple people and they would sometimes rent out the whole lagoon to Hollywood. So what they would do is uh, they would close off the entrance from the Atlantic Ocean with huge concrete blocks, closing the circulation, and then the whole lagoon would very thickly freeze. And then they would make movies like Tomb Raider and James Bond. Uh, where they would drive Aston Martins, Chevrolets, Fords uh, over the ice, making them skirt around, explode, crash, sink in the water, jump around, which is really cool for the camera, but not good for the lagoon. Uh, and after 2017, this place was finally declared a UNESCO heritage, which means this is now a national park and finally owned, protected, monitored by the government and UNESCO. So uh, no more sketchy stuff. Everything's protected. Which kind of seal is this? It's a harbor seal. Harbor seal. Beautiful.